Hey, in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of Hibernate. We'll cover the following topics. First off, we'll ask the question, what is Hibernate? Then we'll go through and look at the benefits of using Hibernate. And finally, I'll show you some real quick code snippets on how to use Hibernate in an application. All right, so first off, what is Hibernate? Well, basically, Hibernate is a framework for persisting or saving Java objects into a database. It's a very popular framework used by a lot of enterprise Java projects. You can download it for free from hibernate.org. And I'll cover all the downloading portion of it later in another video. But basically, at a very high level, you'll have your Java application. It'll make use of this Hibernate framework, and you can use it for saving and retrieving data from the database. So what are the benefits of Hibernate? Well, basically, Hibernate handles all of the low-level SQL code. So it actually minimizes the amount of JDBC code you have to develop. So Hibernate actually provides the object to relational mapping, and it makes it really easy to create apps that store and retrieve objects from the database. So how does it work? Well, again, Hibernate provides something called the object to relational mapping, or you'll hear the buzzword or keyword called ORM. So as a developer, you need to tell Hibernate how your Java class or object, how it maps to data in the database. And in fact, you're going to map your Java class to a given database table. So in this example, on the far left, we have our Java class that's a student. It has four fields, ID, first name, last name, and email. And note how first name and last name is spelled as far as the camel case. We have the Hibernate framework in the middle. And then on the far right, we have the actual database table. So in this example, we have a table called student. It has an ID, which is the primary key. There's a first name, last name, and note it's first underscore name, last underscore name, and then a field for an email address. And what we'll do is we'll tell Hibernate, hey, this Java class student maps to this given table, and you set up the one-to-one -one mapping between the fields and the actual columns in the database. Now, you can set up this mapping via a configuration file using XML, or you can set it up using Java annotations. And I'll cover all those technical details later in some following videos. But for now, we'll just go ahead and say that there's a mapping available for mapping this class to a given database table. Okay, great. Now let's look at a quick example on how to save a Java object with Hibernate. So the first thing we do is we create the Java object and that's standard Java, right? We just use the new keyword, say new student, John Doe, John at love to code.com. That's the first name, last name and email address. Then what we do is we actually save this Java object to a database. So here we make use of session, which is a special Hibernate object. We say session.save and then we pass in our object. What happens in the background is that Hibernate will take that Java object based on those mappings that have been defined earlier. Hibernate will take that information and store it in the appropriate table in the appropriate columns. And Hibernate will do all of that work for you, which is really, really cool. So if you remember back in the old days of JDBC, you would manually have to write the SQL code, manually set those values and manually execute that SQL statement. But here, Hibernate does all of that work for you, which is really cool. And once you do the session.save, then Hibernate will return the actual ID uh, that's been assigned to that entry. And this is actually the primary key. And we can use that ID later if we wanted to actually retrieve that object from the database. But as you can see, it's really, really simple here to actually save a Java object using Hibernate. All right, so we have something in the database. Now, how do we retrieve it? Well, there's a number of different options on how to retrieve objects, but what I'll show you here is a very basic example by making use of the primary key. So again, some of the code here at the beginning is uh, from the previous slide. We created the student, we saved the student, they gave us an ID, which is the primary key. Now I'm going to use that information to retrieve from the database using that primary key. So here I make use of this session.get and I tell it what I want to get, a student.class, and then I give the ID. So behind the scenes, Hibernate will say, okay, let me go look at this table called student. And then let me find the student whose primary key matches this ID. 
they'll find that student object and then return it to you. And that's it. So that's basically how you retrieve a Java object from the database. And again, Hibernate will do all the low level work of doing the query, getting the actual data, constructing the object and then returning it back to your program. Um, so you can see how it's really easy here to make use of Hibernate. Uh, it minimizes a, a lot of the low level JDBC code you would have to write um, in the past. All right. Now, what about the scenario where, where you wanted to say, hey, um, you know, I want all of the student objects, not just one. I want to query and get all of them. I'd like to get a list of those student objects. Well, really easy here. Um, Hibernate has support for queries. So here I'll say session dot create query and I say from student. So it'll basically give you a list of all of those student objects. So here I say query dot list. So that'll actually query the database, get a list of all objects from the student table and then return it to you as a list of student objects. And that's it. So again, notice we didn't have to do any low level SQL code for doing a select query or whatever. Uh, we just created this very basic query. Um, here we actually make use of something called the Hibernate query language. Uh, we'll talk about this in more detail in later videos, but at a very high level, it'll query and give you all the students uh, from the database. And you can set up special like where clauses and so on and so forth, and we'll cover that later. But in a nutshell here, this is how you query and get a list of students. Once you have that list of students, then you can do with it whatever you want. You can use it um, in a um, servlet application or JSP app to build an HTML page. You can use it in JSF, Spring MVC, or you can just do a system out print line with it. It's totally up to you. At that point, you have a list of student objects and you can uh, manage it um, however you'd like. So again, Hibernate does a lot of the low level work for you. So you don't have to write all of that low level JDBC code. So it's really cool and um, um, I like it. <laughs> Now, the really nice thing about this is that I showed you a very high level overview, some quick snippets here. Um, in the following videos, I'll get into all the gory details. Um, I'll have separate videos. We'll do a deep dive on each of these topics. Uh, we'll show you how to set up a connection to the database. I'll show you how to get a handle to this uh, hibernate session object. And then we'll walk through code examples for doing all of the major CRUD features. So when I say CRUD, meaning how to create, how to read, update and delete. We'll cover all of that um, in the following videos. And then we'll kind of wrap everything up with a with a small project that'll actually uh, make use of Hibernate and it'll apply all of the CRUD features here for uh, making use of students. And so you'll see a full working example uh, by the end of the video series. So a lot of good stuff in store here. All right, great. So this is a really good overview of Hibernate, uh, very high level. Uh, like I said earlier, we're going to have following videos. We're going to do a deep dive into all of those features there. And um, I'll show you how to create a Java application that makes use of Hibernate for CRUD. So create, read, update, and delete. So stay with me. A lot of good things in store. So I'll see you in the next video. Woohoo!